But first and foremost, let's get into the story about Rashida Tlaib. So I don't know if everyone has been aware, but Rashida Tlaib has been facing a tremendous amount of criticism from the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. There are some members of the squad that have been, you know, taking her side or trying to stick up for her, but uh, not the way that it should be uh, if they're a squad, I would say. But Rashida Tlaib, as we all know, is Palestinian. Apparently, there is a lot of uproar in Congress about the fact that Rashida Tlaib has a Palestinian flag outside of her office. Now, again, she is Palestinian. I don't see this being different from anyone having a Puerto Rican flag outside their office or a Dominican flag outside their office. Uh, but this has caused a quite a quite quite a, a bit of controversy and there's a lot of pressure coming her way let's go ahead and get into this first clip here growing outrage over squad congresswoman rashida slaves continued display of palestine's flag outside of her office as atrocities are committed by um hamas and israel my next guest has had it so much so that he's introducing a measure to ban such flags from the halls of congress Ohio Republican Congressman Max Miller, who I haven't seen or talked to since years ago and when we were in Normandy, joins me now. Now, why is this controversial that the American flag should be the flag flying or a state flag if you represent a particular state? Right. I don't think this is controversial at all. This is very simple. The halls of Congress, Laura, they belong to the American people. And so the only flags that I believe that should be flown in the halls of Congress should be the American flag states or territories that we recognize in the POW MIA and through the appropriations process, we're going to make sure that none of that is funded. As Rashida Tlaib has the, I don't even want to call it the Palestinian flag because they're not a state, they're a territory that's about to probably get eviscerated and go away here shortly as we're going to. Let's pause there for a second because I already see the problem. So this gentleman who is a congressman from Ohio, he is trying to make this rule that in the halls of Congress, the only flags that you can have outside your office is the American flag and those American territories that the United States recognizes. I don't see this being any different from someone having a Puerto Rican flag in their car or a Dominican flag. These are things I see all the time. A Puerto Rican flag in their car, a Dominican flag in their car. It doesn't mean that they despise the United States. It's just them representing their culture, right? I see the same. Look, I live in the Boston area. I see Irish flags too. A lot of the people that I know here that are Irish American have never been to Ireland, but that is their way of embracing their heritage. So I think this is something that we need to focus on because I'm wondering how far is this going to go? I just saw a story recently coming out of the UK where they were arresting pro-Palestinian protesters because they had the Palestinian flag, not for violence, just simply because they were wearing the Palestinian flag around them. And what I fear is that it's going to get to the point where this is another level of censorship that is going to happen. And you don't have to agree with the conflict. You don't have to even be on a side. I want you to think about this from a censorship issue. First, it's the Palestinian flag. Whose flag is next? What item is next? What else are they going to tell you that you can't wear or you can't display? So that's how I want you to look at this situation going into this story. This is a dangerous precedent here. Turn that into a parking lot, but I've made it my mission to target anti semites That part right there, too. See how he brags about genocide? Listen to this. WMIA and through the appropriations process, we're going to make sure that none of that is funded. As Rashida Tlaib has the, I don't even want to call it the Palestinian flag because they're not a state, they're a territory that's about to probably get eviscerated and go away here shortly as we're going to turn that into a parking lot. Did you hear what he just said? He just basically told you that Gaza is about to go away because they're going to turn it into a parking lot. He's bragging about the idea of demolishing Gaza. Remember what I told you, 2 million people in Gaza, half of them are children. Now people are saying they have been alerted to leave. The problem is where are they going to go? So to the point of that clip I played earlier from Ron DeSantis saying these other countries don't want to let them in, the hypocrisy of him, right? 
where are they supposed to go? If they can't go to Egypt, if they can't go to Jordan, where are the people supposed to go? So essentially what he is telling you is he is okay. By the way, he's okay with this of a genocide of the Palestinian people. When he says they're going to flatten it, they're going to turn it into a parking lot. That's exactly what he's referring to because they are trapped. They have nowhere to go. But I've made it my mission to target anti-Semites. We went after Ilan Omar with HR 76 to remove her off the House Foreign Affairs Committee. I will not tolerate hate or anti-Semitism in the halls of Congress or for the American people. Well, there's a huge it's never hate towards the Palestinians, though. You see, I want you to pay attention to what he's saying, because he's bragging about turning Gaza into a parking lot. I consider that to be some type of hatred. But this is the problem that we have in this country. It seems like it's OK to have hatred towards people that are Muslim and Muslim countries, but it's not okay. You shouldn't have hatred towards anyone, any ethnicity, any religion, any race, but in this particular country, ever since September 11, there has been a surge of Islamophobia in this country. I saw it for the first time after September 11, and now I feel like I'm seeing a surge of it again. So he's okay with that kind of hatred. Let's continue. Huge um, pro-Palestine rally happening right now with thousands and thousands of people gathered in Dearborn, Michigan tonight, um, supporting her. So, and she's, she would say she's supporting her constituents and representing their interests not to be targeted or discriminated against. And you now they have their views on Israel. They're certainly the opposite of my views. Um, but she's saying I'm representing my people. Yeah, and people... So I want to debunk something that she just said here, because this is actually how Islamophobia can spread. She is comparing the Palestinian people to the group of Hamas. So what that group did does not represent the entire group of Palestinian people. And, you know, we have to be very careful here, very careful because I've seen this type of thing happen before. So here she is speaking out, basically saying like, well, yeah, you know, these are, she's representing her constituents. You know, these people are, she's basically saying that Palestinian people are anti-Semitic. It is not right to take the actions of Hamas and label an entire group of people based on the actions of Hamas. That would be like another country labeling the actions of the people that came out in January 6th, of the Proud Boys, of the KKK. That would be like people labeling those groups and using it to identify everybody that's American. There are different groups, there are different factions, and people are not a monolith. But you see what she's doing here. Let's continue. People are entitled to their views. And if she is saying she's representing her district, then I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Laura. She's representing a bunch of people who think it's okay for Hamas to cut off 40 babies' heads, which has been confirmed by dozens of news outlets. She Let's stop there. That has already been debunked multiple times. So he's lying, even he lies twice in one sentence. He talks about the 40 babies and then he lies again when he says it's been confirmed. It was never confirmed. So that's been debunked multiple times. He's also telling people on Fox News that all the people in her district who happen to be, who are Palestinian, agree with what Hamas did. That is not true. Not everyone who's Palestinian agree with the actions of Hamas or support what Hamas has done. Just like not everyone that's Jewish agree with what Netanyahu is doing or agree with the IDF or agree with Zionism. So we have to stop these generalizations. But let me tell you something. They brought him on here on purpose. This is done for a reason. This is how hate spreads. Thinks it's okay 
for Hamas to go in there and take Holocaust survivors. Some of them were beheaded. The news organizations have reported 40 babies oh, were, were absolutely, died. Absolutely. They died. They're dead. They're absolutely dead. And they're cutting their heads off. And she's proudly displaying the flag of terrorism in the halls of Congress. These individuals, if you support Hamas, make no mistake, you are an anti-Semite and you are a savage. And you have no place in the United States of America. Max, what I just want to correct something else here that he said. So again, he continues to lie saying that the 40 babies, that was wrong. That was false. Uh, Fox news, CNN, MSNBC, all of them have told this lie and all of them need to come forward and they need to apologize for that lie. Number one, number two, this point here, hold on. Terrorism in the halls of Congress, these individuals, if you support Hamas, Make no mistake, you are an anti-Semite and you are a savage and you have no place in the United States of America. Max, what do you think? Let me pause here for a second. So Rashida Tlaib never said she supported Hamas. Not once. This is another lie that he's telling. Notice the vocabulary, the words that he's using to describe a group of people. Savage. What other words have they said? They've said savage, barbaric. These are the same things that they said about indigenous people and that they've said about African-Americans in this country. Pay close attention to that. These are those dog whistles that I've been telling people about. No, they're not coming right out and saying, hey, I think all these people are dot, dot, dot. They're not saying it that way, but they're still saying it. I'm calling you Max because you're a kid to me, Congressman. That's no, we've known each sorry. other for I've a known bit. So long. It's all I'm good. Kidding. But um, what about our southern border? I started the show by talking about w w the fact that we could be next. We yeah. have an open border. We're policing Ukraine's border. Israel's trying to police its border uh, with Gaza. How difficult that is, we're going to see. Um, but meanwhile, we have tens of thousands of people coming into the country from special interest countries and 160 on the terror watch list who we know about. Exactly. Let me pause there. There's another lie. She said that Israel is defending its border. As I explained to you on the show a couple of nights ago, a fence is not a border. Gaza is not a separate country. You see, this is part of the reason why, and we can stop it there because then he goes into like the whole immigration thing. This is part of the reason why people have stopped watching mainstream media. This is part of the reason why they just come on here and they just spew these lies. And a lot of this is because they want to keep us divided. They want you to dislike some other group so that we can't come together. I really believe that's the ultimate goal. If it's not for the media, do you hate these people? Who provokes it? Who eggs it on? Who tells you not to like a certain group of people? Now, Rashida Tlaib was approached, and I will say this, Rashida Tlaib, you have got to stop running away from people when they are asking you difficult questions. When you put out statements about how you really feel about your culture and your people, you should be woman enough to stand there and talk to those reporters when they come to you and tell them how you feel. I've seen her do this multiple times. Here we go. Tlaib stays silent when pressed on Hamas brutality. Listen to this. And some of them were beheaded right in front of their parents. And then their parents were killed after the parents had to watch their baby. So again, that's another lie. There they are lying again. None of this was ever confirmed. Nobody saw this happen. And people have been debunking this for the past couple of days. But let's go back. And some of them were beheaded right in front of their parents. And then their parents were killed after the parents had to watch their babies beheaded. So that's what, uh, and then she has a Palestinian flag outside of her office. So Hillary's asking her about, do you condone what's happening? Watch. So you see how she's running away. So this right here, again, you could, what could she have done? She could have at least stopped turned and talked to the reporter and said, this is what I feel. Let me tell you what I feel about this particular situation. When you run away, it makes you look guilty. And I've said this before, the squad is notorious for doing this. 
Anna Presley might stop and talk to people, but AOC runs away. Jamal Bowman likes to run away. They're notorious for doing this. It makes you look worse. Just stop and answer the question and tell them what you really feel. Otherwise it looks like, oh man, I said something wrong. I did something wrong. So I'm just going to take off. Stand up for what you believe in. If you believe, you know, that you should be free to express your culture and where you come from, then you say that to the reporter. But she's running away. Terrorists have um, cut off babies' heads and burned children alive. Do you support Israel's rights to defend themselves against this brutality? We're just going to go through here. You can't comment about Hamas terrorists chopping off babies' heads. Do you condone what Hamas has done, chopping off babies' heads, burning children alive, raping women in the street? Do you have no comment about children's heads being chopped off? Congressman, why do you have a Palestinian flag outside your office if you do not condone what Hamas terrorists have done to Israel? That's like saying, why do you have an American flag outside your office if you don't condone what happened on January 6th? Oh, silence. Why do you have an American flag outside your office if you don't condone the Proud Boys? You see how we can, we can play this game all night. We can turn it around. Why do you have a German flag outside your office if you don't condone Nazi Germany? We can do this with multiple different countries. The reporter and other news outlets, they are actually, it's gotten to the point now where they are basically saying that if you support Palestine in any type of way, that you are supporting Hamas. What one group does does not speak for the entire country, for the entire group of people. We really need to start thinking about this. We really need to start thinking about, what if I would have said to people, why do you have an American flag outside your office after what happened to George Floyd? Do you condone what happened to George Floyd? We have to wake up. And Rashida Tlaib, if I was her, turn around and say that. Turn around and say, look, I am Palestinian. This is my culture. This is where my family is from. And one group doesn't represent the entire group of people. That's all you had to do. Why are you running away? Do Israeli lives not matter to you? That should be the easiest. See? See what they do? See how they flip it? Oh, she just doesn't care. She doesn't care about those lives. You see, now all of a sudden it's, you should care about other lives. But I remember a couple years ago, when people were marching around in the streets in this country saying Black Lives Matter, what was the response from some of the same people on Fox News? No, 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 no. All lives matter. And if we would have responded and said, you don't care about Black lives? Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. That's why I told you this is all propaganda. Now, DSA... And I bring this up because of Rashida Tlaib. This is all connected. DSA is having a riff between the split between the squad and where they stand on this issue and the values of DSA because DSA came out with this statement. Congress is preparing to fund a genocide. Rather than seek de-escalation, the ruling class spends its time smearing those who recognize the humanity of Palestinians and the true cause of this conflict, apartheid. We will not be cowed in the fight for peace and liberation. Why couldn't Rashida Tlaib say that? When I went over the principles of DSA a couple of months ago, one of those principles was that 
as a DSA member, you do not agree with funding Israel. And in reference to the conflict between Israel and Palestine, you side with Palestine. That's one. That's their principles. I didn't write those principles. Now, Politico mentioned this as well in reference to DSA in this conflict. Unacceptably devoid of empathy, DSA is facing an internal reckoning on Israel. Not going to read the entire article, but this part right here, I want you to see. DSA is coming apart at the seams. Representative Jamal Bowman let his membership lapse. Colleague AOC ripped the New York chapter over a pro-Palestinian rally on Sunday. And others on the left are struggling to reconcile their views with the group, even disavowing it amid criticism from across the political spectrum. The reckoning for DSA in the wake of Hamas attacks on Israel could mark a realignment at the extreme end of the Democratic Party. Progressive politicians looking for an endorsement from the DSA have long faced a Middle East litmus test. This is what I was telling you guys about. Answering questions about whether they'll boycott Israel and if they'll back Palestinians living under occupation. I told you this is one of their principles. The brutality Saturday, violence of a greater scope and intensity than earlier Israeli-Palestinian clashes has shaken some who'd been boosted by DSA and the blowback has been felt across Congress, state houses and city halls where the party has made inroads. In Michigan, Representative uh, Shri Thand uh, Thandar officially renounced his DSA membership saying in a statement Wednesday that he won't associate with an organization unwilling to call out terrorism in all its forms. So I saw his statement on Twitter and honestly, my response was, I don't even know who you are. Cause I don't never heard of this dude. All of a sudden he's this big thing because of the statement that he made on Twitter. Who are you, man? Did you not read the principles of DSA before you decided to join that organization? I don't know about you guys, but I look over those things before joining something. In Los Angeles, DSA endorsed city council member Ramon rejected the group's rhetoric late Tuesday, saying a national DSA statement on the attacks failed to reckon with the horrors committed by Hamas and was unacceptably devoid of empathy for communities in Israel. Again, did you guys not pay attention to what the organization was in New York? The DSA lost one of its prominent members in Bowman, a vocal critic of the Israeli government. Jamal Boken, Bowman gets money from J Street. DSA was actually contemplating removing Jamal Bowman's membership over a year ago because he took that trip to Israel. And again, that goes against DSA principles. So he's officially gone. His spokesperson confirmed Wednesday that he let his membership expire last year following disagreements on funding Israel's missile defense system. Again, these people paid no attention to what they joined. The bloodshed and budding war in Israel are shining a brighter spotlight on tension between the often younger left-leaning DSA backed politicians and their mainstream democratic colleagues. And of course you'll see AOC and Bowman here uh, selling out as usual. Now I want to go to this clip here from case study QB also in reference to this particular uh, situation. Rabbi Shmuley was on Fox Business. Now, they actually questioned him about Rashida Tlaib as well. I want you to hear what he had to say. After the horrors of the Holocaust, the world promised to never again allow the senseless murder of Jews. And now people around the globe, they're standing up to the pure evil of Hamas. Here now with why supporting Israel at this time is so important. Rabbi Shmuley Botiach. This guy just seems to make it everywhere, right? Like, come on, let's, I think we know who Rabbi Shmuley is. This guy was a reality TV star. Let's fast forward a little bit to the Rashida Tlaib part. I'll put it right here. Elie Wiesel, the world's most famous Holocaust survivor, famously said, the opposite of love is not hatred. 
the opposite of love is indifference. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it a step further. What about if people who don't even know the difference between right and wrong? It's not that they're indifferent, it's that they're clueless. They have no moral compass. We have American Congresswomen, Rashida Tlaib, Ilan Omar, who are openly siding with Hamas and even the national American media, from the New York Times to CNN, CBS, NBC, they won't even call Hamas terrorists. Now think about that. Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar are not siding with Hamas. They are siding with the plight of the Palestinian people being occupied and having nowhere to go, being trapped in Gaza and being demolished. That's what they're arguing over. But you see, they're all continuing to spread this lie. Mark my words, Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, I don't know when their re-election is, but their next re-election, they're probably going to struggle. Mark my words, Ilhan Omar barely won her primary re-election this time around. This man over here who killed 3,000 Americans, incinerated them, just three miles from here on 9-11, 2001, was he a militant or a monster? Was he a soldier or a savage? Was he a belligerent or barbarian? If you cannot call this man a terrorist, then you have no sense of right and wrong. So the language, and look at the way they're saying, 1,200 Jews were slaughtered in Holocaust level extinction for a day on Saturday and Sunday. And now they're saying that Israel's engaging in retribution? You mean stopping terrorists from killing more Jews is a form of revenge? Jewish life is becoming so um, worthless. It's very painful. You know, you talked about... Uh Let me pause here for just a second. Because I got a bone to pick. Something that I have noticed, particularly in this country, when black people come forward and complain about our plight, our struggle, police brutality, etc., the whole nation doesn't stand with us. And there's not a lot of criticism for them not doing so. And to me, it's just really interesting. We called for all of these things after George Floyd. None of them were fulfilled. When Joe Biden got into office, he created an anti-Asian hate bill. Not to say this should not have been done. But what I am to say is that when black people come forward about our pain and our struggles and the obstacles that we have in this country, nothing is done. This is why sometimes when you hear people say no black issues, no black vote, no black agenda, no black vote. That's why. Notice how whenever it's other groups, everybody just everybody come together, everybody. When it comes to the Palestinians, their lives don't matter. That's what a lot of these people are saying. That's what a lot of people in mainstream media, that's what a lot of these media pundits are basically saying that who cares about them? They're Muslim. Who cares about them? They're brown. I heard the same thing in reference to Iraq, the war in Iraq all the children that were killed in Iraq, Madeleine Albright said, so what? Who cares about them, right? The kids that were killed in Syria? So what, people say. The people that are being killed in Somalia, so what, people say. We have to pay attention to this. And I told you before, why is that? Why is it? Because when it comes to the U.S. government, they don't feel like we have anything to offer them. The politicians don't care about us because we don't have anything to offer them except our vote. 
And they know that. So the Democrat politicians, they continue to come around only when they need to be reelected. And they'll say, give me your vote. Otherwise, you're going to get the Republicans. Yeah, I hear your struggle. I'm going to do all these things for you. Never do anything for the black community. Never do. Yeah, we'll start a reparations committee. Nothing moves because they know that we're not giving them anything that's going to help them elevate their political career. We don't have most of the resources. And it's, it's honestly, it's a damn shame. But all of our politicians, they basically just look at us like, meh, who cares about them? I'm not up for re-election. I'll come back to the black community when it's time for me to get re-elected. But where were all these people? And I'm not just talking about George Floyd. I'm talking about all the police brutality cases that have happened. Where were all these people? Fox News, they were blaming George Floyd like they always do. Let me blame the victim. CNN and MSNBC used it as an opportunity to pander to black people and say, this is why you need to vote for Joe Biden so that this doesn't continue. As if police brutality is only happening under Republican leadership. Pay attention to this, guys. Uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, she was left us dumbfounded when she refused to condemn the murder of Jewish babies by Hamas. I want you to listen to this, I want you to respond. When when asked here, she was silent, but now she is saying her critics are the hateful ones saying, quote, I do not support the targeting and killing of civilians, whether in Israel or Palestine. The fact that some have suggested otherwise is offensive and rooted in bigoted assumptions about my faith and ethnicity. Rabbi, how would you respond? Rashida going to be gone. How much you guys want to bet? Because these lobby groups, they're going to put up money against her. Let's remember, Bakari Sellers actually created a pact to try to prevent her from being reelected this time around. Rashida Tlaib. She hides behind her ethnicity, but there's a universal morality that Muslims, Jews, and Christians, and atheists and agnostics all live by, and that is that life is precious and that murder is a sin. Stop right there. She hides behind her ethnicity. The statement that she just gave just told you that she does not agree with the murders on either side. So what is really the problem? The problem is, is that she's acknowledging that there's been catastrophe on the Palestinian side as well. And that is not what they want you to say. That is not what they want to hear. They don't want you to acknowledge it. They don't want you to talk about it. They want you to pretend that the Palestinian people do not matter. How is that helping out humanity? Rashida Tlaib is an American abomination. Um, she won an elect election seat. I truly hope that her constituents will rise up and evict her. Because Hold on to that, because that'll probably happen. Listen to what he's saying. I hope her constituents rise up and evict her. Hold on to that. Us. She is a disgrace to Islam, which is a great world religion, but she's a disgrace to American values. If she really believes in Hamas, let her go to Gaza right now and try to express an opinion against Hamas. She, God forbid, would lose her life, which nobody wants. We want to keep her safe. Let her say one good word about an LGBTQ Palestinian who have to flee to Israel rather than have their genitals cut off, being decapitated. If you cannot condemn the decapitation of 30 infants at a kibbutz, then evil has no meaning. And I'll tell you something else. Let me go ahead and say this again for the people just joining. That has been debunked multiple times. And people are still spreading this lie. Now he's trying to scare people out of going to Gaza. You know how many journalists have gone to Gaza? Max Blumenthal has been there. 
Abby Martin has been there. Anya has been there. Several people I interviewed Kim Iverson earlier today. We recorded that interview. It'll premiere tomorrow. Kim Iverson went to the West Bank. Journalists have been there for years. So why is he trying to make it seem like if you even step foot there, you will be killed? I love when people like Rashida Tlaib and Elon Omar speak about how religious these Muslim the Hamas members are. Do, Muslim, do religious men take a half-naked, unconscious woman in her undergarments and parade her body around with such necrophiliac prurience? These are fiends. The savagery is it's very difficult to contain. That's also been debunked. In fact, that woman came forward recently. You see the... Anyone... Why anyone would align their self with this guy? It's very obvious this guy just wants attention. He wants publicity. He was on a fucking reality show. But to hear it in the halls of Congress is something that would make the founders of our nation who came to establish liberty and freedom turn over in their graves. I just want to point something out uh, while you're here really briefly. The Democrats have known that this is what these individuals were all about for years. Going, this is in 2019. Rashida Tlaib invited a Hezbollah and Hamas supporter to a private family dinner, celebrating her elevation to Congress, a man who had said Israel had no right to exist. Um, and y'all, and you guys on Fox News have had white supremacists invited on to Fox News. So I don't think, really think you're the one to talk. I don't think you're the voice of morality here. Uh, and when she joined Congress, she put that post-it note on her map and that said Palestine and pointed to Israel. And when you quote over and over again the language of from, what, what is the language from river, uh, from river to sea? See, Palestine so, will be free, of course. Right. But, that means, all Jews. but that means eradication of genocide. Jews. The that means genocide. genocide. So we know. This is how the hypocrisy comes in. So notice they have no problem with genocide of Palestinians. You got. <sighs> oh my god oh my god and for sean duffy to sit there you know what sean go back to the real world if people don't know that's where sean that's where i remember sean coming from was mtv's the real world boston that's how sean got to where he is i can't even listen to the rest of it. it's absolutely disgusting Disgusting. You see the difference in the way the people are treated. And this is why I said before, for black people on the internet that are saying the BS, miss me with all that. Miss me with all of it. Because I, as I said before on this show, during the George Floyd protests, Palestinian people were out there in the streets with us. They were teaching the protesters how to fight off tear gas. We have similar struggle. When Afini was on the show, what did she tell you? What did we tell you? There is a statue of Nelson Mandela in Palestine. Nelson Mandela went to Palestine. Nelson Mandela fought back against apartheid in South Africa. Now, some of the same people who speak out against the apartheid in South Africa, they can't speak out against the apartheid that's happening in Israel. And you guys need to sit back and ask yourself why. Malcolm X went to Palestine. You had Black Panthers who were in solidarity with Palestine. But a lot of people don't know this because the history that you're reading in your textbooks has been whitewashed. Close the books in your schools, close those history textbooks in your schools and go educate yourself in the fucking library. Go pick up some of the books in the library, the ones that they don't tell you to read. Not the ones that your teacher assigns you. Don't just read those books. There are still people who are Black Panthers who are still alive today. Talk to some of those people. Get to know the real history of revolutionary leaders in this country, and you'll understand. 